Uh, should we start? Yeah, yeah, Lazi, should we start? We can start, we can start. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I would request uh, others present in the meeting to please uh, mute your uh, audio and video because we are getting an error over here. Uh, those who are present in the meeting, please mute their audio and their video because we are getting some uh, network issues over here. Those who have joined online, please mute your audio and your video because we are getting some uh, network issues over here. Okay, uh, Lodzi, I'm audible. Very well, very well. Okay, thank you. So, uh, we start our program. A respected uh, principal, sir. Respected resource person for today, Professor Lozi Martil Mutem Kamchung. All my colleagues present over here and my dear students. Today we have gathered here for an international seminar which is being organized by our college, which is uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Shatabarshiki Mahabidalai. It is a college in uh, the West Bengal state of India. So we have invited our resource person for today, who has kindly consented to deliver a talk today. So our resource person for today is Professor Lozi Martial Mutem Kamchung, who is an associate professor of English language and linguistics, Department of Bilingual Letters, Faculty of Arts, Letters and Social Sciences, University of Marua, Cameroon. His research areas include sociolinguistics, cognitive linguistics, morphosyntax. He has got innumerable publications to his credit. I am reading out some of his, a few of his uh, works, which include linguistical cultural diversity and peaceful coexistence in Africa, multilingualism as a model, 54 years of coexistence of English and French with native languages in Cameroon, language, media and technologies, usages, forms and functions. Today, his topic of discussion is managing linguistic and cultural diversity in contemporary society, practices, challenges, and remedial strategies. On behalf of our college, that is Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Shatabarshike Mahavidalai, I welcome our esteemed resource person for today. Also, I extend a warm welcome to all of our friends who have joined this meeting online. So before we go into the lecture, I would request some time from you because we have a felicitation ceremony. Before every program, we felicitate our respected principal, sir. So today also we have with us our respected principal, sir, Dr. Chitranjan Dash, and we would like to felicitate him with a plant sapling. No, sir. No, sir. You have to. So I would request one of our assistant professors, head of the department, Bengali, Mr. Bashudev Mondol, sir, to please come and felicitate our principal, sir, with a sapling. Our principal, sir, is being felicitated.
Now I would request our principal sir to come on the dais and deliver his introductory lecture for today. After that, we will go into our main academic session. Am I audible? Well, audible. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Everybody who are, who are present here and here who are present there over there. Uh, welcome to India, West Bengal uh, and, and to our college that is situated in the border of Indo-Bangladesh. It, uh, it is named after the uh, writer of our Indian constitution, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So I am gladly welcoming you to our college and to all the students, all the faculties and all the members present here, all we are welcoming you to our institution. I am really very grateful and very much thankful uh, to have this international seminar organized by our internal quality association cell and the members present here, all the IQC members and all the faculty members and the students of different departments and also non-teaching staff. And I am first of all welcoming you all and I'm giving you my cordial thanks for the seminar and for this topic which is going to be discussed here, very pertinent topic. Our speaker is you, our IQC coordinator has already mentioned it, Professor Loji Matyal Matem Kamchin. He is the Associate Professor of English Language and Linguistics and Department of Bilingual Letters, Faculty of Arts, Letters and Social Sciences, University of Marua, Cameroon. Here we will discuss a topic that is the topic, the topic uh, title has been framed by the speaker, Professor Loji, that managing linguistic and cultural diversity in contemporary society, contemporary society practices, challenges, and remedial strategies. Uh, just a few days back, you know, uh, we have organized the International Mother Tongue Day, Mother Language Day. That is also on the subject of language. Language is the part which cannot be isolated from the society or the, from the cultures. So uh, it is very much essential to identify the language with society and also with the culture. Here, Professor Loji has mentioned the cultural diversity in contemporary society. The very much pertinent how we pronounce the language, how we place our language, how we express ourselves before others, that is determined by the society and by the cultures. That is called, if it is in society, then it is there is the phonetic tendency which normally determines our pronunciation and also the cultural and social diversity in expressing ourselves. Somebody, somebody is entering. <coughs> you know language has the two purpose language can serve. One is to identification, is to identify ourselves and other one is the expression. I want to express myself. The language, the expression and also identification. By both these means, it is the diversity which is reflected there. So uh, we'll be, we, it will be very much helpful to our students and to the faculties and to the uh, faculties of uh, Bengali, English and Sanskrit teachers and Sanskrit departments that wh what are the diversities what are the social and cultural diversities when you 
pronounce a language, when you place a language before others to express ourselves, to identify ourselves, that I think those, those things will be discussed by our uh, resource person, Professor Loji. And we all will be benefited by uh, his uh, lucid speech and also erudite uh, talk, which will be placed before you. I am not going to enlarge this session with my welcome address. I uh, just want to hear from the speaker that how the diversities and the challenges and the remedial strategies are there to face and to, uh, to place there to remove those things. It will be very much helpful to the students and to the faculties of Bengali, English and Sanskrit and it also will be helpful to me and also with all the faculties other department from other departments and I, I uh, before I, I am concluding here I again welcome Professor Loji and the IQC all the members present here and the, all the technical staff present here for giving this opportunity to give my welcome address and hope a good session before you ahead thank you Thank you, our principal sir, Dr. Chittaranjan Dash, for delivering this welcome address. Now, without taking any more time, I would request our esteemed speaker for today, Professor Lozzi, to deliver his keynote address. Professor Lozzi, please. Thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Rupina Bajuri, I would like to say thank you to uh, the hierarchy of uh, the college, you know, to give me the opportunity to present uh, this uh, keynote speech entitled uh, Management of Linguistic and Cultural Diversity in Contemporary Society Practices, Challenges, and uh, Remedial Strategies. This keynote uh, speech is uh, structured you know, into six parts, uh, namely uh, some definitions for the first part, and then I will talk about the mapping of linguistic diversity. Uh, next, I will talk about the importance of linguistic and cultural diversity, and then uh, we're going to discuss some current practices you know, in the management of linguistic and cultural diversity. And we are going to talk about some challenges concerning the promotion of linguistic and cultural diversity. And finally, some remedial strategies. Uh, let's talk about uh, some definitions first. What is language? What is culture? What is linguistic diversity? And what is cultural diversity? According to David Crystal and uh, Robin Henry, Robin, in uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, language is defined as a system of conventional, spoken, manual, or written symbols by which, by the means of which human beings as members of a social group and participants in its culture express themselves. So language know how uh, the function of communication, uh, the expression of identity, uh, an imaginative function, and the function of emotional release. So language defines personal identities, but is also part of a shared inheritance. So language can serve as a bridge to other peoples and cultures by promoting mutual understanding and shared sense of identity. What is culture? Culture refers to beliefs, values, norms, behaviors, and overall can be understood as our ways of being. It can refer to all aspects of human life in so far as they are determined or conditioned by membership of a society. So language and culture are intricately related and dependent on each other. 
and they shape personalities and serving as a repository of knowledge. And language and culture contribute you know, to how we see ourselves and can determine with, can help us determine, you know, determine uh, the group with which we identify. Uh, what is linguistic diversity? Linguistic diversity can be synonymous to multilingualism, which can be defined as the coexistence of many languages, variety of languages in a society. So linguists uh, distinguish three types of diversity, namely the diversity of language, that is language diversity, that is diversity in terms of the number of languages, uh, also have the phylogenetic diversity, that is diversity in terms of uh, the language families. And you have the typological diversity, that is diversity in terms of uh, the amount of structural differences or disparities you known between or among languages. Let's talk about the mapping of language families in the world. In contemporary society, Linguistic diversity or multilingualism is considered as the norm. So more and more societies are more multilingual. And monolingualism is an exception. So uh, the top 10 mostly linguistically diverse countries in the world are the following. First, you have Papua New Guinea, with 840 languages and a population of 8.8 .8 million inhabitants. You have, secondly, Indonesia with 711 languages with a population of uh, 270 million inhabitants. Then you have Nigeria with 517 languages with a population of 210 million inhabitants. And fourth position, India with uh, 456 languages with a population of 1,366,000,000 inhabitants. And then you have the United States with 322 languages which are spoken and with a population of three, uh, 328 million inhabitants. And then you have Australia with uh, 312 languages with a population of uh, 24.4 million inhabitants. And then comes uh, China, you know, with uh, 309 languages, with a population of uh, 1,328,000,000 inhabitants. And then you have Mexico, with uh, 292 languages, with a population of uh, 292 million inhabitants. And then Cameroon, with... Uh, with 274 languages, with a population of 25.9 million inhabitants. And then uh, Brazil, with uh, 222 languages, with a population of uh, 211 million inhabitants. These figures are provided by Ethnologue, the World Atlas, in 2021. So, uh, close to 7,000 languages you know, are accessed in the world. Uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, Indonesia are the, the first two mostly linguistic diverse countries in the world. And according to Ethnologue 2021, there are two key factors that determine uh, linguistic diversity. The first factor is the isolation for modern life. So, a likely reason for the country's linguistic diversity is its isolation from modern life, as over 80% of Papua Guinea uh, population lives in rural areas and has minimal contact with uh, external influences and other tribes that enables them you know, to maintain all their languages and avoid the death of their languages because, you know, they have minimized the contact with other people with the external world. The second factor, according to Ethnologue, is, is geography. 
Indonesia, for instance, is made up of around uh, 1,750 um, high islands, and this can be used to explain linguistic diversity. Okay, is the, the same also applies to Papua New Guinea, you know, which uh, in which comprises a lot of islands. Uh, let's talk about the importance of linguistic and cultural diversity. Languages and cultures being part of the human heritage, you no, know, they should be preserved. So linguistic and cultural diversities, you no, know, should be protected and promoted for various uh, reasons. The first reason is that uh, language diversity plays an important role in people's identity, cultural autonomy, and even their well-being and mental health. Secondly, supporting language diversity are, by supporting language diversity, we strengthen people's cultural heritage and therefore their identity. Also, people who speak more than one language possess improved cognitive abilities and educational outcomes. Also, Diversity is in itself a form of beauty, and every language in the world has its own unique elegance, and we should embrace that beauty. In a workplace or in any organization, cultural diversity can improve productivity through new ideas and innovation. So cultural diversity, you no, know, might include you no know, new ideas and innovation, since people with different uh, cultural backgrounds than the majority might see new solutions to problems that have been invisible uh, by the workers of the majority group. Uh, like linguistic uh, diversity. Cultural diversity should be preserved and protected. The reasons for the promotion, preservation, and protection of cultural diversity are clearly spelled out you know, in, the in the 2010 UNESCO Universal Declaration of Cultural Diversity. And according to UNESCO, you no, know, these are the following reasons for which we should pro we should uh, preserve cultural diversity. The first reason is that uh, cultural diversity is a common heritage of humanity. So, as a source of exchange, innovation, and creativity, cultural diversity is necessary for humankind. As, biodiver as biodiversity is for nature. In this sense, it is uh, the common heritage of humanity and should be recognized and affirmed for the benefits of present and future generations. The second reason is that cultural diversity is a factor of development. So, Cultural diversity widens the range of options open to everyone. It is one of the roots of development. The third reason is that uh, human rights guarantees cultural diversity. So the defense of cultural diversity is an ethical imperative inseparable form from the respect of human dignity. It implies a commitment to human rights and fundamental freedoms, in particular the rights of persons belonging to minorities and those of indigenous people. So no one may invoke cultural diversity to, in, to infringe upon human rights guaranteed by international law. The next reason is that cultural diversity preserve, preserve cultural rights. All persons have the right to express themselves, 
and to create and disseminate their work in the language of their choice, and particularly in their mother tongue. All persons are entitled to quality education and training that fully respect their cultural identity, and all persons have the right to participate in the cultural life of their choice and conduct their own cultural practices subject to respect for human rights and fundamental freedom. Also, cultural diversity, cultural um, heritage is a wellspring of creativity. So creation draws on the roots of cultural tradition but flourishes in contact with other culture. For this reason, heritage in all its forms must be preserved, enhanced, and handed to future generations as a record of human experience and aspiration, so as to foster creativity in all its diversity and to inspire genuine dialogue among cultures. These are some current practices known of the preservation of uh, cultural and linguistic diversity worldwide. There are some legal instruments you know, which have been used to manage la uh, linguistic and cultural diversity. As I mentioned earlier, Linguistic and cultural diversity should be preserved in various countries. There are various legal instruments and other initiatives you know, which have been set up you know, worldwide to preserve linguistic and cultural diversity. The first legal instrument is the UNESCO Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity, which was adopted you know, by the General Conference of the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural uh, Organization during its 31st session on November 20, 2001. The declaration stresses the fact that for the diversity of cultures, stresses the fact that you know, we should respect the diversity of culture. You have to be tolerant, you no. Know, you have to go for dialogue, cooperation, in a climate of mutual trust and understanding among uh, uh, these are the best guarantees of international peace, security, and cohesion. The second uh, instrument which have been used you know, to manage the, uh, the linguistic diversity you know, is uh, the Charter of Fundamental Rights in Europe. Uh, linguistic diversity is enshrined in Article 22 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of European Union. So the respect for the rights of persons belonging to minorities is a fundamental element of the Charter. This Charter prohibits discrimination against people belonging to minority groups and demand a respect for cultural, religious, and linguistic diversity across Europe. Also, uh, the other instrument which have been used you know, to promote and manage uh, linguistic diversity and cultural diversity is the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages, you know, and the Framework Convention for the Protection of National Minorities. These charters bind uh, all countries you know, of the European Union you know, uh, for inclusive rights and to define and recognize national minorities within their borders, including the right of minority groups to serve determination. The other legal instrument is the European Day of Languages. No? Uh, every year on the 26th September, the European Union Commission unites with the Council of Europe, the European Centre for Modern Languages, 
uh, language institution and citizen across Europe know to promote linguistic diversity and language learning through the European Day of Languages. And in the United States, uh, there is uh, the, the United States Civil Rights Act, Civil, uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of national origin of people working and living in the United States. And in India, the Constitution of India has included the clause to protect minority languages as a fundamental right. It states, I quote, any section of the citizens residing in the territory of India or any part of thereof having a distinct language, script or culture of its own shall have the right to conserve the same. So language policy of India provides guarantee to protect the linguistic minorities. Under the Constitution of India, provision is made for the appointment of a special officer for linguistic minority with the sole responsibilities of safeguarding the interests of languages spoken by minority groups. Also, uh, the Indian constitution protects the interests of children to get basic education in their mother tongue. So the constitution states, it shall be the endeavor of every state and of every local authority within the state to provide adequate of every, to provide adequate facilities for instruction in mother tongue at the primary stage of education to children belonging to linguistic minority groups. So the founders of the Indian constitution gave top priority to the teaching of mother tongues, enabling the child to develop its full potential. In Canada, uh, there are some uh, measures which have been taken to promote, to manage, uh, and to protect uh, linguistic and cultural diversity. Uh, the first instrument is the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. So in Canada, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, passed by the Parliament in 1982, uh, state, restates and defines elements of the Constitution Act of 1867, which respect the official languages, okay, that is English and French, and uh, these are which are the two official languages of Canada. And uh, it also mentions that you no, know, these two languages are of equal status and of equal privileges. The next instrument is the Canadian Official Language Act of 1988. This act grants also equal status to English and French before the court in parliament and throughout areas of federal jurisdiction. It also spells out the federal government commitment to supporting and fostering the flourishing of official language minorities and encouraging progress towards equal status and use of French and English within Canadian society. In addition to these two instruments in, in Canada, there are also other instruments which have been developed now to preserve uh, uh, linguistic and cultural diversity. So these instruments are the following. You have the, departmental, the Department of Canadian Heritage, the, Can the Canada Council of Arts, the National Art Center, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the National Film Board, the Telefilm Canada, the Canadian Radio and Television uh, Telecommunication Commission, the National Gallery of Canada, the National Museums of Science and Technology, the National Archives of Canada, and the National Library of Canada. In Cameroon, uh, my home, my country, a country in West, uh, in Central Africa, you know, 
the Cameroonian constitution, you know, makes provision for the respect, you know, for English and French as official languages, and also protect, you know, and promote, you know, home languages. There's also a commission which have been created, you know, by the head of government or by the head of uh, by the, by the head of state of Cameroon to promote bilingualism, multiculturalism, you know, to enable conflict. Also, uh, the Cameroonian uh, education make provision for the teaching of uh, uh, national languages, you know, and it trains the teachers of national and uh, national languages and cultures, you know, in the teachers' training schools okay, of the country. Uh, it is important to point out that there are some challenges, you know, uh, which face you know, the promotion of linguistic and cultural diversity. For instance, you know, in a workplace or in any organization, linguistic diversity might increase communication cost and thereby reduce productivity. So um, with a workforce from several different cultures, you know, we might have to spend uh, resources to integrate the workers into well-functioning teams. For instance, cultural diversity might imply preference for heterogeneity, and that might create tensions and conflicts unless the firm or the institutions have made provision to handle these conflicts. Also, in a workplace, language diversity can create the cost of communication, as I said earlier. This cost of communication can slow down production uh, in, uh, as information spreads more slowly and because uh, there might be misunderstanding which, which can occur among the workers which belong to various cultural uh, diversities. Uh, the potential cost uh, linked to diversity, which uh, cultural diversity in an enterprise, uh, might increase with the distance between the languages. Also, uh, still about the cost, it's important to mention that the context of linguistic diversity, uh, when two individuals want to negotiate a contract, they might need a translator or interpreter, an interpreter if the two parties speak different languages. So acquiring a translator or an interpreter might imply a cost. Also, language uh, differences can increase uncertainty among other parties' expectation, their interpretation of the contract, and their commitment to the contract. Furthermore, in an enterprise or in any organization with workers who are linguistically diverse, the flow of communication between workers can slow down or it can be slower if co-workers if co do not understand each other well, and this can result in production problems and conflict. Moreover, Language differences can result in task differentiation, which might have negative effects on productivity in non-native language speakers, if non-native language speakers do not have uh, a common working language. Good. Uh, how can linguistic and cultural diversity uh, be promoted. There are some remedial strategies, you no, know, which have been suggested to promote, you no, know, and preserve linguistic and cultural diversity. Uh, for instance, uh, we're going to focus essentially on the educational context. Teachers must respect all learners and themselves as individuals, you no. Know, with cultural who are with culturally different identities as teachers we should understand the linguistic and cultural diversity of our society 
and we and we should know that we enter into classroom with our own social identities and cultural biases and we should see our classroom as being multicultural and we should work towards respecting the values and celebrating our own and our students unique you know, uh, diversity and create equitable working conditions also in their teachings teachers should incorporate text and pedagogical strategies that are culturally and linguistically responsive so as to increase student efficacy motivation and academic achievement also teachers need to learn about the communities in which they teach. This includes opportunities to explore and experience the context in which students live and form their cultural identities. Also, teachers should develop unit and classroom activities that grow out and speak to children's interest and cultural background. Also, teachers should encourage students to research and document life in their homes and communities. Furthermore, teachers should choose text for students that reflect cultural and ethnic diversity of the nation. And they should incorporate, you know, in their lessons or syllabus, popular culture, you know, like um, films, videos, you no know, cultural um, videos and music into classroom curriculum. Also, they should invite parents into classroom to speak to all students on family life, cultural traditions, and to share an area of their expertise. Also, they have to, uh, uh, it's important to talk to parents, you no, know, and learners to learn about their linguistic and cultural backgrounds, their cultural history, their cultural heritage, their tradition. Okay, it's very important, and it's important to develop, you no, know, the understanding of uh, the history of our cultural practices and rituals, you no, know, to the students. Uh, concerning um, uh, the management of cultural and uh, linguistic diversity in companies uh, and in states, as far as uh, companies and organizations are concerned, it is important for workers you know, speaking different languages to make provision that is uh, the company, the official company should make provision that you know, they shall uh, be a working language in an organization and they should provide uh, language courses you know, to workers you know, so as they become very fluent in the working language of the company. This will help to facilitate you know, communication among the members you know, of the company or of the organization. For workers speaking different uh, varieties of the same language, uh, it's important to design a workable international communication standard communication. This will help to develop you know, and to facilitate you know, communication among you know, international workers you know, of the community uh, who speak the same language but different varieties of languages. This is what has been referred to as the standardization of communication in the international setting. Also, workers who are linguistically and culturally diverse should also learn how different people to have the, they should learn you no know, directly from people with whom they interact every day in their company. And they should do it continuously by monitoring perceptual cues 
in the context of each interaction. Um, at, a, at a level of the state, you know, it is important to use a policy of regional balance in the state to make sure that individuals from diverse cultural and linguistic groups you know, are represented in all spheres, in all, in all strata of decision making, in government training, in government training schools, in the public enterprises, in the central government. This policy is also applied in many African countries, for instance, in Cameroon. It is worth concluding that, you no, know, as we have seen, despite the challenges, you no, know, linguistic and cultural diversity is a heritage, you no, know, of humanity which should be preserved. So, linguistic and cultural diversity, as I said earlier in my speech, is necessary to humankind as biodiversity is to nature. Diversity should unite us. Diversity should not divide us. On this note, I thank you immensely you know, for uh, giving me the opportunity to present this you know, um, keynote speech before this August Academic Assembly. And I would like to thank uh, Dr. Rupina Bajuri you know, for the organization. I would like to thank the principal of the college you know, for having given the authorization for this uh, scientific event and for having chosen my humble person as you know, the keynote speaker for this academic uh, and scientific uh, uh, conference. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lozi, for this uh, wonderful uh, speech. Uh, as we all know, uh, India is a land of cultural and linguistic diversities. So uh, it was very pertinent to listen to how you made a very elaborate uh, and comparative analysis of the many linguistic and cultural diversities which are prevalent. I'm sure all of us have benefited a lot from your uh, lecture. Now I open this house for discussion. If anyone has got any confusions or any suggestions or any comments, I would invite uh, any questions, suggestions, comments from our August company that is here offline as well as our friends who have joined online. If anyone has got any uh, questions, they can ask Professor Lozzi. Any questions anyone has? Okay, our principal sir is saying that he has got a question. Thank you, Professor Loji. You have explained very clearly the linguistic and cultural diversity in the prevailing society. But I just want to know one thing, very shortly, I just want to answer. What is socio linguistic and how it helps us in preserving linguistic and cultural diversity? If you give me answer in short. I cannot get the question very well. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, it is, what is socio linguistic? Do you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, yes, I'm listening to you. Yes. What is socio Did you get it? Yes. What is social linguistics, right? Yes. How it helps us in preserving linguistic and cultural diversity? 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, social linguistics, no, uh, can be defined, no, in general terms, no, as uh, language used in the society. So, a language in a society, no, is um, used on the basis of various variables which affect uh, its use, no. There are variables uh, linked uh, to age. There are variables used linked to you know, the ethnicity, uh, the level of education of the people speaking, and also on the social class of, uh, of the speakers. You know? um, social linguistics you know, uh, discuss or gives a lot of importance you know, to the preservation of uh, linguistic and cultural diversity because in social linguistics we consider languages as a resource we consider language you no know, as you no know, a cultural asset we consider language you no know, as a heritage of humanity which should be preserved so uh, social linguistics you no know, as a discipline you no know, or promote promote you no know, linguistic diversity by stressing the importance of languages and cultures to humanity. We all know that you know, uh, languages you know, is an aspect of culture. Okay? Language is an aspect of culture. And culture is a very important aspect of the heritage. If language and cultures die, it is a serious or very important aspect of the heritage which has disappeared. So in social linguistics, you no, know, we develop strategies to develop uh, to, 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 to maintain languages and to avoid or uh, to avoid language obsolescence, to avoid language death. So in social linguistics, we develop mechanisms for uh, the preservation of languages. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, thank you, Lozzi. Uh, we have another of our professors from the Department of English. He would like to put a question before you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I can't get well. I can't get well, please. Can we start again? Yes. The network, I can't get, I can't get you word. I can't get you. I can't get you word, please. Hello? I can't get you well. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Could you hear the question? Yeah. I didn't get the question. I didn't get the question. Can you start again, please? Okay, okay, okay. There has been some network issues. So that's why I think you couldn't hear the question. Uh, I'll, I'll tell our professor to repeat the question for you. Okay, thank you.
Sorry, sir, for the network issues. Extremely sorry, sir, for the network issues. All right, okay, thank yeah, you, sir. Am okay, I audible, please? Start, start again. Yeah, okay, now, start again. Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, as you mentioned in your lecture, uh, while mentioning the different language families around the globe, there are about 7,000 languages in the world. But in a present globalized and uh, uh, post colonial scenario, the excessive influence of powerful Western languages like English is affecting the culture and its cultural excellency of our minor languages here in India. But, sir, what is the scenario there in Africa or in the countries like Cameroon, Nigeria, Chad, Congo, or Central Republic? Central African Republic or Gabon in this regard, especially in regard to the home language question there in the post-colonial and globalized situation in Africa. I mean, I shall hope uh, it is a question before you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, thank you. Professor. Eminent Professor. Can you get me word, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Lozi. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, in uh, Africa, you know, uh, European languages, you no, know, have affected seriously, you no, know, uh, African languages, you no, know, and uh, English also, English and French, English, French, uh, Spanish, you no, know, has affected you no know, African languages, and. Um, uh that is why in many african countries no uh many home languages are not taught they are not taught in the secondary and high schools it is just recently you no know, as far as Cameroon is concerned and even chad and uh, gabon that you no know, uh, the state has taken a decision to start teaching uh, home languages you no know, in the educational system so uh, European languages like English and French, you no, know, have uh, affected seriously, you no, know, the promotion of uh, African languages, because you no, know, uh, Africans had you no know, very uh, positive attitude towards uh, European languages because you no, know, it's the language of the colonizers. They were colonized by uh, the French uh, and the British. And these uh, people have imposed you know, their languages. And then uh, uh, after decolonization, many African countries adopt these languages you know, as their official languages, as the language they use in all aspects of the public life. It is in the administration, in the judiciary, in the business world, you know, in, the, in the health domain, and so on and so forth. So uh, Africans you know, have, neglected, have neglected the promotion of their home languages. That is why um, many African languages are spoken, but many, very few of them are written. And in Africa, you know, as uh, the word Atlas at note indicates, you know, uh, is a part of the world where you have a lot of uh, situation of language death. There are many languages that die in Africa, you know, uh, because uh, its speakers you know, have uh, instead developed uh, attitude towards foreign languages and they have uh, abandoned you know, their home languages. So um, it is a serious problem. I really thank you for this question because it's a serious problem which has to be addressed. Uh, fortunately, you know, uh, the states in many African countries, for example, in Cameroon, the government is making um, a lot of efforts you know, in order to uh, to promote uh, of, uh, to promote home languages, because um, uh, there is a commission which has been uh, created, you know, for the promotion of uh, uh, official languages and home languages and much uh, Home languages are now being taught in uh, training schools of teachers. They are already taught in primary schools, they're also taught in uh, secondary schools and high schools. That's the case of Cameroon. So other countries you know, in Africa should take it as a model you know, and uh, continue this perspective. Because you know, if, we, Afri if we Africans, if we don't take that seriously, our cultures, our languages can, uh, can die. 
Our language can die, you know, and it's a serious problem. And if language die, as I said earlier, it is a whole part of a heritage which has died. So we should uh, develop mechanism in Africa, mechanism to promote uh, our home languages, to promote our cultural diversity, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much for the question and the contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lozi. Uh, very well addressed. Now, does uh, anyone else uh, among our online guests who are here from Africa who have joined, if uh, you have any questions to Lozi, then uh, you can please ask. Are any one of our guests from Africa are, do any one of you have any questions to Lozi? Okay, so I believe we don't have any uh, other questions. Uh, so now we are at the end of our seminar. And uh, I would like to thank all those who have made this seminar very successful. First of all, I would like to thank our respected principal, sir, Dr. Chittaranjan Dash, who has always been a, a constant support for us for organizing all these seminars. Next, I would like to thank our esteemed uh, uh, speaker for today, Professor Lozzi, who has made out his time uh, to be with us today and deliver his uh, erudite uh, lecture. Uh, I would also uh, like to thank all the members of Internal Quality Assurance Cell, that is the IQAC of this college, which has organized this seminar. I would also like to thank all the teaching faculties of this college and also all the non-teaching staff who have helped us constantly for making this seminar very successful. I would also like to thank all the technical staff who have uh, come out in support of uh, this seminar and helped us in various ways. Last uh, but not the least, I would like to thank all our students who have been patiently sitting, listening to this lecture, and being with us. So with this note, I thank everyone, all our guests from Africa who have joined this seminar, who are here with us. I also extend my thanks to all of you. With this note, thanking each and everyone. If I have missed someone, please uh, forgive me. Uh, with that, I uh, uh, conclude this seminar. And I request all everyone present here to exit this meeting. Thank you, Lozi. Thank you, everyone. We'll exit this meeting now.